Facebook page. Um, hi everybody, my name is Evita and uh, I'm doing this live stream coming at you from Syncopated City, which is an online school that uh, I have been building for the past five years with my dance partner Michael Jagger and also my husband Simon Powis. Um, we've, uh, we're, we've been really having a lot of fun with these live streams. Uh, we are trying to help out our friends, our colleagues, and other artists in this time of lost work. And uh, if any of you are tuning in and watching, and if, if you're in a financially stable place and you want to send a donation to the guest artist, you can do so by directly going to syncopatedcity.com forward slash live. Um, that information is at the bottom of the screen and whatever you send, if it's $5, $1, $10, euros, pounds, whatever you want, um, it goes directly to uh, our guest artist. And I'm super excited today. My dear, dear friend Nathan Bew is going to be joining us. Um, I'm sure uh, lots of you might know of Nathan or you've taken class with Nathan. Uh, he's, quite, uh, he's quite intense and thorough and brilliant. Uh, and he has for the longest time been a huge fan of uh, The Spirit Moves as an as a incredible resource for, for moves and steps. And I've always been really... Um, I guess entranced by his enthusiasm with these clips because oftentimes when I've watched these clips, they're so fast and they're so complicated that I have a hard time understanding or seeing what's going on. Uh, but Nathan has really helped me to see just all the different gems that lie in this footage. And so we're gonna be learning or trying to learn a very complicated, uh, footwork that happens for a leader um, in one of these clips. So um, I was talking just to kind of like let the video settle in. If anybody is out there, uh, say hello in the comments. Tell me where you are watching from. Tell me what you're interested in. Um, and if anybody has any questions, you can also put them in the comments and I'm going to be reading those and translating them to Nathan. Okay, so let's see now. This is always the part that I get uh, I get hopeful or anxious about, which is let's try to call Nathan and hopefully make sure that the technology works. Um, so we'll give him a second to pick up. In the me. Oh. I think we got hi Nathan. <laughs> um, we're gonna we're gonna give you a second for your image to pop up. Uh, but just in the moment, I want to say hello, Cheren. She's super excited for this session with Nathan. Hi, Nick. Hey, hey, hey. Philly in the house. Excited to take this on. Elena from Barcelona. How are you doing? Great to see you. Uh, Todd. Hello, Todd. And Melanie from Boulder, Colorado. Rebecca Robbins hiding out in the Berkshires. That sounds lovely. Uh, Doug Barber from Vancouver. Ron. Hello again. Uh, Anna Maria from Iceland. Oh, that's cool. And Croatia, a Croatian is watching from Barcelona. Hi, Nella. That's super cool. Um, so please keep the comments coming and let us know how you're doing. And I will be babysitting uh, or, or keeping an eye out on that. Hi, Spencer. Hey, I'm glad you could join. Oh, hi. Is it Iveta? Iveta. Iveta or Ivita, I'm not sure, from Lithuania, hello. And Neil, just watching, just so that you can be amazed. Yeah, I understand, this might be one that you just enjoy watching. Stefan from Germany, James. Wow, from Grenoble, Jennifer, Paolo! Ah, oh, Paolo from Paris. Okay, I could keep going, I could keep going. I'm so excited to, to see all I of mean, you. I mean, hey. And I think, I think Nathan is excited yeah. too. Nathan Bew, there you are. We've got your image up. I can hear you. And <laughs> of course, you're wearing a Jazz Roots shirt. I think at jazz this roots, point, baby. yeah, I, th I think at this point now, perhaps Nathan only owns Jazz Roots shirts. That's his whole yeah, wardrobe. Much. Yeah. Um, well, Nathan, there's there's a ton of people uh, that are tuning in. We've literally from Chile, from Malaysia. This is this is very exciting. So um, exciting. So exciting. 
So Nathan, um, how are you doing? I'm great. Welcome to my apartment, everyone. <laughs> yeah, your uh, your apartment is is cozy. You and Gabby are are doing well. Doing well, as well as can be expected. Everyone's yeah. in the same situation. Do you uh, do you have any work? Uh, or do you have savings that you're living off of right now? I mean, not that I want to get too personal with your financial wow. situation. Wow! Wow! We went right there. Uh, I'm, I'm just fine. Checking. I'm fine. Yeah. All right. I'm like an adult, um, and I've been a full time dancer for a long time, and I'm like a normal adult human with savings, and uh, and everything's fine. It's well, just a few months off of work, and we'll see, you know, we'll see how the situation evolves. Well, um, I, I'm glad to hear that you're fine. And yes, hopefully we will get back to some new type of normal where we're able to dance and teach with people again. Um, but in I the meantime... My main concern is not, you know, whether I can survive. It's just uh, hoping that some of our illustrious projects can have some sort of a life like our big swing dancing show and the touring things and the dates for more forever i think those are my primary concerns like that the big creative projects still get to happen in the future yeah i i feel the same way um i i, but I think how about if we uh do yes. some uh dance classing well, well, we will, we will. This is just kind of like the, you know, the the welcoming protocol, which is that again, if anybody is uh, is interested in showing Nathan some love, cheering him up, although apparently he says he's fine, but you know, Nathan likes hugs and attention, even though he would never ask for it. <laughs> if if you want to send anything over to Nathan, um, he has a PayPal uh, account, and that link is at syncopatedcity.com forward slash live. And um, any any help or love, uh, I'm sure Nathan and Gabby would appreciate. So, and uh, you know, we love you, Nathan. We want to make sure you're okay. Thanks. Um, yeah, okay. I mean, I mean, this is work, sort of. <laughs> this is what I did for. A, this is what I used to do for my job back when we did that sort of thing. Yeah. In the well, before times. In the before times, yeah. In the in the. What is this going to be like BC before Corona? Yeah, that's good. I like that. <laughs> I also hate that. So okay. <laughs> All right. Well, so um, so one of the things Nathan that that you are known for being good at is breaking down, chewing on really complex steps that uh, that have their their source material from old clips. Um, do you want to tell us about what you're going to give us today? Most people only know that it's going to be a hard step. You want to talk to us any more about it? So the subject uh, that Evita and I conspired to create, it was Evita's idea more than mine, but, but the subject that we've got is, is taking a difficult step, um, in this case in particular, from an old movie. And this is a, its own kind of skill when it comes to dance. I've noticed over the years, some people are very good at <clears throat> taking steps in person, but sometimes can't take it from a video. And the opposite is true. Like Daryl Bejan from uh, Providence, Daryl Began, uh, he can take anything from a video, but he doesn't always gel with a class. So it's an interesting uh, uh, uniqueness. I guess. And uh, I've been taking steps from video for a long time, since I was a teenager. I'm, I'm 37 now, so a little more than 20 years I've been taking steps from video and have had my own journey. And um, because of the formatting here, I'm not going to be able to talk as the video plays, but I can still give a few ideas about how I stole the step. Then I'll be teaching this uh, teaching a step and Evita will be learning the step along with anyone who wants to learn at home. So if you're watching to dance, there will be some time um, where I'm expecting that you're practicing the step as I'm teaching it. And if you're just watching to uh, be entertained, then hopefully you'll be able to see Evita 
working on the step. Uh, the thing we're going to steal is a step from the Spirit Moves. The dancer who we're taking the step from is Teddy Brown. Teddy Brown, maybe full name Theophilus Brown, maybe a uh, Harvest Moon Ball winner in the 60s with Elizabeth Stewart. Uh, this footage would have been shot in the early 50s or late 40s, and Teddy was about 19, 20, something like that. So he's about 20 years old in this, uh, in this footage. And a uh, really brilliant dancer. I believe he's like one of the dancers they that they consider the fourth generation of Savoy dancers. And um, he was really well known for Calypso. And in the Spirit Moves footage, you can see him doing Calypso as well. But uh, this is a clip of Lindy Hop. And there's a moment when he's separated from uh, his partner and he uh, enacts the step that we're gonna steal as they come back together. But we're gonna learn it and contextualize it as just a step pattern, not as a Lindy Hop pattern. And so I'm gonna be dancing it in the context of maybe a, a Charleston dance or something, you know, just just dancing to jazz music and then and then using the step. So that's the that's the background on all of this. I think it'd be a good time to just watch the footage uh, a couple of times, and then we would have a little bit of context before I stand up and, and keep talking. That sounds amazing, Nathan. Um, so hang tight with me, ladies and gentlemen and friends and people. Uh, we're going to screen share. I'm so excited. And then um, in the comments, let me know if you can see the image, if it looks okay to you. Um, and of course, uh, I've turned the volume down so there's nothing to hear. Um, yeah, there's nothing to hear because the music is not synced. So we'll, we'll watch it a couple of times. So that's Teddy. There's some beautiful kind of shoulder shaking. There's the step. Oh my God. Okay, I think we should probably watch that at least five more times. <laughs> well, let's watch it two times, maybe three times, and we'll watch it again later. All right, sounds good. Hold on, let me get us back to <clears throat> a little bit back, a little bit back. This is not the easiest. Uh... There we go. It's like 15 minutes and 50 seconds. I'm going to go back just to 15 minutes and 47 seconds. So here's our second time we're watching it. We're going to pick up Teddy's footwork here. All right. And then one last time. Let's watch that again. Oof. All right. I think we see what we're talking about here. You want to you wanna talk to Great. us, Nathan? Okay. All right. First, uh, for anyone who's uh, following along, and also for me, maybe just I've been sitting on the ground talking to y'all, so I need a second. And if you're going to dance along with me and Evita, maybe you could take a second. Just reach out your arms and legs and uh, get your body ready to move. Uh, I was practicing this step about 10 minutes ago and fell down doing it because there's some sliding at, in it. So I think, you know, if I'm falling down while I'm doing it, I think it's a good thing to be aware of. Like this step is, is uh, deceptively simple. And, um, but it does have the potential to put you on your butt. So you're going to want to be ready to move even if, even if it feels like you're just taking a bunch of jogging steps. Nathan can, I, uh, Nathan, can I also say really quickly that this is from uh, volume two of The Spirit Moves. Is that correct? It's from, yeah, that's, that's a reference to these commercially released uh, VHS cassettes. Um, and, and this is from the middle one, which is referred to as volume two. It's not the same as, say, the second collection of footage 
from the institutional copies of the Spirit Moves, or maybe uh, a, another re-editing of a theatrical release. So when someone says Volume 2 of the Spirit Moves, we're only talking about one publication. So if you have that publication of the Spirit Moves, then it's the second volume. Um, okay. So uh, it's the set. Of, it comes from the set of footage from Ladies Free Night um, at the Savoy. So that's what that's what it's from. It's the Lindy Hop footage from the Spirit Moves, um, the social Lindy Hop footage. So uh, great. So let's uh, let's just start by having me dance the step, and I think. It's just to give some dimension a little bit to the step when you see it just one source from one angle. So I'm just going to get into a little groove here and I'm going to put this step in my dancing. So there I did a little bit of Charleston and I I threw the step in there. So I just wanted to do that to start, get your brain, to get your eyes going with a sort of a three-dimensional look at this step that was originally uh, a flat movie. Uh, and I'm going to start breaking the step down and talking to you about my process of stealing steps. So when, I, when I'm going to take a step that's difficult, meaning like it's quite fast and it's confusing, Maybe the camera sometimes isn't, uh, you know, clear and focused on the dancer or something. The first thing I do if it's an old movie is I turn off the sound. Avita did that for you. Um, because a lot of times the sound and the audio is not very well synced. And even if it seems like it's synced, it's, uh, it's, it's still sometimes very misleading. So I try to listen to the sounds and the, the video, I, I separate them. So if it's a tap clip, I listen to the sound as a set of clues. And then I watch the video in silence as a set of clues. And if I can bring them together, that's fine. But if not, that's fine. Uh, the second thing I do, uh, and that's where we're going to get a little physical, is I look for an anchor. And... This is part of the formation of a theory of the step. It's important to come up with a theory for the step. Like, well, what could it be? So it could be five, five weight changes, or it could be a Charleston basic or something. And the theory of the step is going to center on some sort of anchor point. Like, um, he's on his right foot at this moment, and I'm going to call that moment one. So my original anchor point for this step, my original theory for the step, began with a right foot step, getting ready for this sort of like twisting heel thing. And I was calling that one, like one, two, three, four. So that's one of my early theories of the step, which was supplanted later. But that's how I started learning in the step. I was thinking like, okay, right, left, get ready. And then sort of a Suzy Q, uh, right foot step, heel fan, left foot step. One, two, three, four. That's one of my early theories of the beginning of the step. And, and that evolved. Uh, my understanding of that anchor point evolved until, until I realized that that right foot step had a crossing it's also the fact that he's turning so one two so he's rotating right to left there's a slide over one and he's still rotating and he's on his right foot on the toe so the right heel moves two so that that became my anchor and then i kept watching and um you know i was watching for like the moment when he's doing a shimmy and turning and I wanted to find, well, what's the first moment that I really feel like rhythm comes into focus? Like he's not just like wandering around, but there's something really deliberate, something really purposeful that suddenly has this new energy. And I started to see that moment earlier as a left foot step. So that became my new anchor. And I started calling that the one. So one. And now I notice it's not just a slide, but it's actually a scuff. So one scuff, 
cross and slide. So that's my final, that's my current step, uh, that's my current theory of the step, and that's my current anchor moment. So when I watch the step, I'm watching him shake and turn, and I'm waiting to see the left foot have a sudden moment of purpose, and I call that one. And then I'm calling the right scuff two, and I'm calling the crossing over step three. And three is like this, but the left foot is allowed to slip. So if you don't have slippery shoes, then it would be like hop cross, but you want it to be like a slide. So that gives us our, our uh, Nathan's current theory of the step, the first three beats. One, two, three, or step, scuff, hop, cross. Five, six, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three. And when I come across, I want the right foot to be turned out a little bit, like it is here, because I'm going to take another step and rotate my right foot as I, as I rotate my body. Five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three. I'll show you from this angle. Five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three. Five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three. Five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three. Now, when you break down something, it's kind of hard to know where to pause because there's no pause. For all the counts of the step, there's never a pause. It just is ongoing, and it's a lot of dancing until it slows down a little bit for the slides at the end. And, I, and this is not a natural stopping point. I think neither, neither is the next step. But you might want to just take one more step just to fix your feet and call this a stopping point. <laughs> so like one, two, three, four. And at the point that you step four, you can have your toes realigned. And the way that that happens is that the right heel should be the thing that moves, like this. So if you take four steps, you should end up in a basically standing position. One, two, three, four. Or four, four beats, excuse me. Five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four. Okay, so at this point I'd like to stop and I'd like us to watch the video again. And I want to tell you about your viewing experience of the video. So what I want you to see is they're dancing together and Teddy, uh, they separate and they're dancing and, and uh, grooving and shaking and Teddy is doing some shimmies, and he's turning slowly. And, and I want you to look for what you have as the theory of the step now in your body. And your job is to see, can you find that anchor point that I am using when you watch the clip? So you're watching him turning and shaking, and you're looking for this. And that's going to kick off the step. He's turning and shaking, and then... Okay, so see if we can find that. Thank you so much, Nathan. I'm coming. I was just trying to, to uh, get the screen ready to share. Uh, I might have gone back a little too much, but it's not no that problem. bad. Not, not, no problem. It's nice to see. So I'm going to hear, you know, from you, Evita, I'm going to hear if you can find it. And then other people watching, you know, feel free to comment right away, like, got it or no yeah, idea. Yeah, so this is, you know? this is, she's shaking, she's shaking her shoulders. He kind of swings her out. Uh, they're dancing together. He does a Texas Tommy. And then they're doing the shaky, shaky, groovy, groovy. He's got his hand on her shoulder. Tuck turn. Yeah, and then there's a turn. And then they let go. Well, oh my God, it was fast. <laughs> it's fast. But okay. we have a theory of the step. And so we're just trying to find that one moment of clarity. Right. Okay, let's go back so let's a little bit. Let's watch it again. We only need to start at like 15 minutes and 40 seconds or something like that. Right. 
We're watching it. He's stepping in two, two, one, two, three, four. Whoa. Again, maybe one more time. It goes so fast. Here we go. One, two, three, four. Oh my God. So when he's shaking around, walking in the circle, he's probably walking half time. Yeah, he's stepping every other beat. Uh, uh, oh, I see. Wow. Okay, last time. Well, a few more. So, so here. One, two, three, four. Yeah. Okay, so let's uh, let's come back to my space. Yep. Yeah, we've got. Um, so, let's see. Yeah, this Ste is Spencer. Spencer so, says he can't see the steps. Stefan says, "Does anyone send the link of this video? Can anyone send the link of this video?" Um, on your own time, you guys, you can go to YouTube and you can actually type in "The Spirit Moves Volume 2 and it's roughly around fifteen minutes in. You can see this. Um, oh no, I don't think the whole volume is on YouTube, is it? Uh, I I found it a moment ago. Yeah. Okay. And Chiren says, I think I saw the step, but it's very fast, so maybe. And David says, sort of. It's like walk, walk, then into it. Yes, I think so. Todd said he saw it. So yeah, tell us, tell us more about it, Nathan. All right. Great. So so let's just learn a little bit more of the step. But that was my insight into how I'm taking this step. Um, and we, we should have, you know, another chance later to look at the video and it's still the same process. You're watching them dance and they have the um, shoulder hold and they have a tuck turn and they let go of each other and Teddy is shimmying and turning. And then he has like a right foot weight change that I'm not counting. And then he has a left foot weight change that I'm calling one. And then the right foot has the scuff and comes around one, two, three, four. And we're going into it. Now the next part is the first part that's maybe a little tricky. So uh, my original concept of the step was like right, left, almost like a Susie Q in place. But um, I noticed that, so go ahead and try right, left, like a Susie Q in place. But I noticed that both feet are moving when the right foot is moving. So it's actually together left. So the next piece of dance we want to practice is the, after the right foot comes over, so step, step, both feet together, and then the left foot goes back while the right foot pivots out like Susie Q. Step, step together, back. Step, step together, back. Right, left, everything left. Right, left, right, left. Right heel, left. Right heel, left. And then that left foot back is a triple step type thing or a touch slide step. It's a siska boomba uh, left foot back. So instead of, instead of right foot fan left step, it's right foot fan left left like this. Now, if you're new to that kind of action and you've never done that before, you might want to do it as a triple step. So you would be going triple step, starting with that Suzy Q type of a foot fan. Triple step. So if you're not new to it and you've done that Siskiyou step a bunch of different ways, that it doesn't really have to be a triple step. It can kind of be just a left foot punch and then a left foot step, like, and it doesn't really have to have the weight change. It doesn't, uh, I'm watching you, Evita. It doesn't have to be that dramatic with the right foot sliding, like, like that. I think that's going to slow you down. 
It's more about getting it getting the left foot weight change twice, and it's not about a big slide. So it's like this. You just gotta be ready for the right foot to go. Yeah, don't 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 commit so much to upper body weight. Like this is too much. It's just boom boom. Okay, um, so let's take this new portion that we have together, left, left, together, left, and left, together, left, and left. That's the very new part. The part right before it was the crossing step where the right foot is a little turned out. And we can have two steps, so step, and then fix your feet, step, and then together, left and left. Or three, four, five, six, seven. And before that, we had the very beginning. So we have step, scuff, cross, step, together, Triple step, or left and left. And the beats I'm calling that are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Five, six, seven, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Five, six, seven, and a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Five, six, seven, eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Five, six, seven, and steps, cuff, cross, step together, fan, and left foot repeat. Five, six, seven, and step, scuff, cross, step, together, triple step. Five, six, seven, and step, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Five, six, seven, and two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay? How are we doing? We're doing good. We're doing good. People are uh, probably trying it on their feet because nobody's typing in. Um, Anne Tap says, love you guys. <laughs> and uh, Nick and David helped us out with the YouTube clip. Uh, clip. They did find it on YouTube. People are, are able to take a look at it later in their time as they want. Um, so, yeah. uh, Vita, can you perform your best uh, rendition of those uh, seven counts. Hell yeah, I can. I'll do. I'll do my best. Um, okay, so, and of course, I'm still keeping it slow. Five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'll do it again. Five, six. Here we go. Step, scuff, boop, eh, da. Oops, I messed that up. Step, scuff, slide, step, together, fan, butter. Five, six, here we go. Boom, ba, shoot, ga, eh, eh, eh. Yeah. Any thoughts? Okay. Any notes? That's looking Again? good. Uh, of course, when you count off, we aren't quite synced up, so it's hard for me to tell. But, but uh, looking, it's looking pretty good to me. And... Um, I would just say that be careful about committing too much weight forward at the end. Like this is a this is a bad example, and this is a good example. But I think that will get solved when we go on because you'll only be able to do so much in the time uh, in the time that's available. But I would like to take this as our like halfway. <laughs> point to uh, stream the the original clip uh, two more times. And and also, yes, we will. And before we do, I did notice that Stephanie had a question. Uh, she says, are you aiming for a certain amount of rotation at any point in the step? So, um, you know, I think the question gets to a really critical 
issue of stealing old steps, which is that, or stealing steps from a video of a improvisation or a performance, which is that uh, for the dancer in the video clip, the movement is just uh, natural to them. Uh, they are not aiming for a particular rotation, but um, but we are in the modern age, and we are using this technology, and we're trying to, uh, you know, we're in the age of virtuosity, and we are trying to use our theft of the step to learn as much as possible. So you kind of have to compromise in as much as you want to do the step so that it feels natural. Um, and natural to you might be a rotation of a few degrees more or a few degrees less. But then in order to, uh, to know that you're learning, you also need to be as close to the original step as you can. And so you bring these two things together slowly. Like maybe when I first had the theory of the step, I paid no attention to how much I rotate. And I'll go like. But then once I, once I start to feel physically confident about those weight changes and that movement, then I'll try to make my rotation the same amount as uh, Teddy's rotation. So, like, the first example, I just let my body turn as much as it wants. And in the second, you know, that's just turning as much as I want. And in this example, I'm trying to turn at the speed that Teddy looks like he's turning, and I'm trying to assume that this camera is like the camera filming Teddy. So let's cool. watch the clip, uh, and we have a little bit more of the step. And it, if you'll remember, my original theory of the step didn't even start until until this is a setup, and then this moment. So I originally, my eyes weren't able to lock into the step until the part we just learned. That was my original first moment. So let's see if when we watch the clip, it's a little easier. Now that we have more of the step, it's maybe easier to see from right here. All right, I got gotcha. you. Here we go. Share on the screen. Let's make it larger. And here we go. I went back just a little bit. This is their swing out. Texas Tommy, hand on the shoulder. Yeah, I did see that triple step slidey thing there. <laughs> Here we go. What I first noticed was the right foot fanning out. The yeah. Suzy Q style foot fan. The right toe. Yeah. Okay, we're watching it again. He's walking around. I can't even say it as fast as he does it. Yeah, we probably shouldn't try to talk along with it because of uh, sync issues. Okay, one more time, one more time. Mm-hmm. Cool. Um, uh, Ashok asked, is the left foot slide on beat four accompanied by a drop in height? Is the left foot slide okay. on beat four accompanied let's, uh, let's by... Let's come back to my space. Oh, Nathan, did you hear the question? I, I heard the question. Okay, just checking if I had muted myself or not. Um... So on, uh, on beat four, it's a normal step. So this is, uh, the, the numbers are all a contrivance and they all come from me. I, I invented all the numbers. Uh, so the way I've been counting it, there's a left foot slide 
on two. So one, two, and then three, the right foot comes down. I think that's what you're asking about because four is just a normal step. So one, two, three, four. Um, I, if that's I think, the right I think, moment, I would say yeah. it's not going to be a uh, drop in height. Uh, Evita thinks it's later because you're thinking one, two, three, four, five, or something like that. And, uh, and I would say there also, I wouldn't focus on dropping height. The thing that you need to keep in mind um, to answer a question like that is that this is very fast, right? It's very fast. And in the swing era, the relationship with the ground is punchy and light. And it's a kind of a modern idea because of classroom learning to really centralize these drops of the weight and dig into them like boom, boom. But when something's fast and slick and, you know, swinging, there's not a lot of time for your head to go down and to come back up. And the whole thing is going to have to happen kind of like on one level. And there may be drops like like the way I'm dropping every other beat right now. Uh, but it's always being pushed back up immediately. So I'm never committing to any level change with my head. And if you learn the step, it's probably not going to be useful to practice this. Like that's why I keep complaining to Evita about committing too much weight. So regardless of which slides you're talking about, I would try to keep your elevation. One, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You'll notice this time I'm trying to keep my elevation. And this would be me dropping all the time. And I think that dropping all the time is is not correct. Also, you can think about what the clip looks like, right? And the clip doesn't look like a bunch of poses. In fact, you probably wouldn't notice the detail the first time you watch the clip because it just looks like some frenetic stepping. So my answer to the question would be um, no dropping. That was, that was uh, so, great, Nathan. That was super helpful. I, I think that was good. So going on, yeah, there's something, yeah, there's something about the swing era where it's like, and you notice this with the Balboa, where it's like the dancer body is there. This is also true with tap. The dancer's body is like there in space and the feet are doing things out from under the body and pushing the floor like with the ankles. You know, this is a very like jazz, swingy kind of a way to move as a put like you know if you took a step like this for example would swing dancers do like this but like a hip-hop dancer would do like this you know where, where it's about the commitment of the of heavy heavy attacks of the body you know what i'm saying I'm not, I don't know how to do it. No, no, I, I, like, I know what you're saying that in like, order to keep up with the speed and the consistency of the pulse, you keep, you, you keep the body light and literally ready to go. There's very few moments that, that as you were saying, drop down too heavy. Yeah. And you push, you push against the floor like, like this with your ankles. Okay. Yeah. So going on, the, let's, let's close this out. So we got ourselves set up here. We did our Sisko Boomba style, left, left and left. And we're going to do another scuff. Now, my original concept of the step was that it was like a scoot, like an eagle slide. But um, I think that he's hitting his heel. Um, so either way, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to call it a scuff. I like... When I see a dancer do something earlier, like he does a scuff earlier, usually I'm inclined to say that it's most likely that he does it again as a scuff, if he's a scuffing kind of a guy. So that's another tip for stealing steps. A lot of times, like with uh, Mabel Lee, for example, Gabby was working on some Mabel Lee uh, material from video, and a lot of steps are really difficult to see because the camera's in the wrong place. 
But then later, if she's doing a similar step, you know, you would try to you would try to retroactively let that inform the earlier step. You know, in this case, uh, originally I didn't think it was a scuff, and then I noticed he does this. He scuffs as he comes around, and so now I started calling everything like that a scuff because I think that's likely. So back to the back to the act. We're all set up, and we're gonna say scuff. And then the scuff is also a little bit of a scoot. So you might practice trying to scuff your way around like uh, John Bubbles. And then we're going to take some two quick steps. So scuff, step, step. And that's the angle that, that he has in the video. The scuff carries him away from camera as he approaches his partner. And then the two steps take him back the other way. Scuff, step, step. Let's make it three steps. Scuff, step, step, step. Scuff, step, step, step. Scuff, step, step, step. And now, what we really want here is to use our momentum, but we can learn without. This is the only place where we might have a little bit of a level change because of a slide. We are gonna, we should be thinking of ourselves as on the right foot, and we're gonna step on the left and slide the right foot out the back. So I'm here, I think of myself as being on my right, in reality, maybe I'm a split wing. I'm going to step with my left in the front and let the right foot slide out the back. And if you don't know how to slide, you could think of this as hop step, like hop step. And you slide a little bit. And then I'm going to slide forward for like an A-shaped slide into something like a squat. And that moment is when... Uh, you know, Teddy's gotten himself all the way back around to the beginning of a swing out. So those last few moments are get ready, swing out. Okay, so that's the last thing you see before they're doing their partner dancing again is from the scuff. And then swing out. So by that time, they've reconnected. So let's review. Left foot is in the front. And we're going to say scuff, step, step, step. Scuff, step, step, step. Slide the right foot out the back, step. And then come forward into the squat, squat. Scuff, step, step, step. Slide, slide is the rhythm. Quick, 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 slow, slow, slow. The way we've been counting it, the left foot here is seven. So this is eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So one, two, the scuff on eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And now that looks good. I'm watching Evita. And the kind of flow that you want to have is, if you have enough room, the idea is that when you get to your slow slides, you have backwards momentum from the scuff and turning your body. And I'll show a big exaggerated version. So you see, in this time, I'm using the scuff. I don't know if I, am I visible during that whole time? Yeah, you're good. You're good. We can see all of you. So I've got a big running start. This, this time I'm going to use the scuff to travel, and I rotate, and I still rotate while I slide. Actually, I'll do it towards the camera, I think. And now I'll go, now I'll go away from the camera. So I'm using the scuff. Part to build momentum. 
for the slide. For the slide back. Scuff, momentum, 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 arrive. Momentum, arrive, and then recover. Yeah? Momentum, arrive, recover. Okay? Yeah. I can't. <laughs> it's funny. I'm, I'm talking in sync with what I see from you, Avita. All right. But I know that it's not synced up. So, uh, Avita, that last one, uh, you need to keep the chest up. So when we do it for real, it's like okay. that. Sometimes when I'm showing it an exaggeration, maybe I'm exactly. down here, but we actually should probably keep the chest up. Okay, so I'm gonna take it. I'm gonna take it from five, six, five, six, seven. Scuff, ba, ba, ba. Keep the chest up. Again, shut, ba, ba, boo, eh, ah. So you really, yeah. I feel like I'm, I'm really using my butt and my legs a lot more than the upper body to try and make everything happen. The second one was the best one. Don't let your back, don't let your slide be um, so big that your spine can't handle it. Like, this is bad. Oh, cool. You know, you got to keep it, you got to keep it under you like this. Oh, I love that. Hit do do go ooh ah. Eight one two three four five six seven. Yeah, that looks nice. That's really nice. Thanks, Nathan. That's that's super helpful. The idea when you say you got to keep it underneath you, uh, yeah, it's like you can't let the hips or the legs slide beyond what your core can control. And then that's yeah. a really good uh, yeah, it's a really good general sentence for all kinds of sliding, you know. And swing era is like the golden age of sliding. Yeah, and and I also thank you for reminding me to not push with my upper body because I think a lot of us, even if you're trying to get a point across and you're talking to someone, you can sometimes like lean your head forward or lean your body forward to get a point across, and uh, that just contorts. Uh, the balance of the body. So when I was sliding, I was trying to like, ugh, ugh, and thank you because it made it, it made me think about working further from the bottom. Um, hold on, let's see. So let's, uh, says, let's... Real, real quick, Nick says you were right about the whole falling on your ass thing. Ha ha ha! Did you fall down? Ah, uh, sorry. About I gotcha. And Alyssa says uh, thank you for all the live chat lessons. Oh, been enjoying them here in South Africa. Wow, that's amazing. Thank you, Alyssa. Um, uh, so, a uh, tip cool. on falling, uh, just bend your knees when you're falling. If anyone is, if anyone starts falling, you just want to bring yourself closer to the ground as quickly as you can. Okay, so, so bend your knees to... Yeah, to you want away. falling to be like this. Um, and I and I'm not and I'm not even gonna show a bad example of falling because it it would hurt so much. So what you what you don't want to do is fall from straight legs and then just go all the way to the ground. Like when you when you feel the slide going out from under you and you're not holding it anymore, you want to bend your knees right away. Like bend your knees. I gotcha. I gotcha. Nick says cool. Yeah, super helpful. Super helpful. And Christopher, by the way, he says quality content. Thank you, Nathan. And uh, you can actually practice falling pretty safely. Like you could practice, uh, I'm going to bend my knees to put my butt against my heels and then roll back. I'm going to go all the way to the ground. And then, you know, that's not much different if you're sliding. Yeah, I'm going to sit down on my foot, you know, that kind of thing. Uh, don't do on to that right now because if you hurt yourself too bad, you can't finish the lesson. But if there's a thought, you can kind of practice falling. Anyway, um, don't practice falling right now because if you mess it up, You'll fall. Uh, <laughs> that's that's true. So that's true. Let's just uh, let's put the step together because we're running out of time. So the whole step from the top, we're gonna review moment by moment. We got the left foot weight change. Call that one. Scuff and slide over with a little turnout. Turnout. Calling that uh, two three. Uh, left foot takes a step. And the feet reorient. And then we have feet together, Susie Q. And a triple step. 
And now we're at the part we just practiced where the scuff, quick, quick, quick. Slide, slide. So the whole step is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm going to show you from this side. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm going to talk you through it as naming the steps. I'm going to go slower. Step, scuff, cross, step, together. Triple step, scuff, step, 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 slide, step, slide, squat. And I'll do that with counts. Five, six, seven, and one, two, three. Four, five, six, and seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm doing all this from uh, your perspective right now, as if you were doing it with me. Now I'm going to do it from camera perspective, as if I'm imitating Teddy. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven. And this is all very fake artificial dancing. I'm not really dancing it. I'm just sort of describing it with my body, which is not real movement. But so step, scuff, cross step, step together, fan, triple step, scuff, step, 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 slide, step, slide, squat. And now I'm going to dance the step faster and you just see if you can witness the step now that you know something about it. When it's faster, I get to use the momentum. I'm going to do it. Uh, I'm going to play a little music. I'm going to dance a little Charleston. And uh, I'm going to do that step. Um, just to answer Chris's question, yes, Chris, we will totally get Nathan to tell us about his shoes at the end, at the end. I missed something in there. Let me try it again. Hey, that was better. But it's okay if it becomes its own step as well. Okay, so one of the problems that I'm having is that in the clip, the step is actually much faster. So I'm going to play faster music because um, the transition from the quick steps into the slow slides feels very artificial when the music is not fast. So fast music, and then I can do the step the way that, or closer to Teddy. And then, uh, you know, just a thought for a final application, like I've stolen a step, and I keep trying to keep it on camera angle. And this time, what I want to do is I want to dance a little bit, and I want to use the ideas of the step, but I don't want to have to be accurate. 
So I'm just going to do a little free improvisation for 10 seconds, and I'm going to go into the step. But, you know, there were a couple of times I missed the rhythm, and in real life, I wouldn't fight the mistake. So I want to have permission to just let the rhythm change for my body and for the music I'm dancing to. So it took me a little warm up creatively, but I think I eventually kind of found the land where the shapes of the step started to make sense for my body, but I wasn't focused on accuracy. That's kind of where I want to be. All right. Take um, a, take, take we're a at breath, the end Nathan. of the hour. I think it'd be great if we could watch the original clip because we've never seen it while we know the whole step. So some of us may be able to execute the step and we have a fully formed theory. And so the last or the middle step of any, the middle um, moment when you're stealing a step is you take your fully formed uh, theory of the step. You go back to the original footage knowing what you want to see. And you have to see if what's in your imagination matches up with what's on the screen. The way that if you thought something was a swing out, you would know if they were doing a swing out. Well, now we think something is a step and we want to see that step happen. And if, and if that's what happens, then we did a good job stealing it. All right, I love it. Here we go. Let's share the screen. I went back a little bit, so we've got just some more time to watch them dance. Here we go. Oh, interesting, Nathan. So that last part that you taught us, he's actually already partnered her because he uses it to send her out. Right. He can get a little momentum for the backward slide by pushing against her, but you don't need it. Right. Um, also, Lisa just wrote, amazing. So much more is now visible than at the, at the start. Brilliant tutorial. Thank you, Lisa. Um, Sorry, I went back a little bit far, but that's okay. We can enjoy their, their movement, and you can also kind of get a sense of the tempo that they're dancing to as we watch them for longer. Very fast. Yeah, that's why they're chilling, maybe. Or you know, and people still dance like that in New York, where you're just uh, you're in an open position and you groove on the six-count basic. That's pretty common in this sort of late 40s. Savoy yeah. footage, and that's yeah. still how people dance in New York, like open position, six count, like as a really Here thick groove. It's not so common like worldwide in the contemporary academic Lindy Hop scene where people like to do sugar pushes and people like to have like kind of contrived eight count waiting patterns and stuff like that. But in, the, in, the, in this footage from the late swing era in New York, like that's kind of how they uh, did their waiting dance time with uh, with jig walks, basically, was what Frankie would mm. say, jig walk, like waiting six count. You see that, like, I was just watching Al and Leon on the Playboy clip, and I was noticing also a lot of, like, closed position waiting six count without any direction and without leaning the shoulders in the way that the um, West Coast, uh, like, the Hollywood dancers, you know, they'll kind of, like, lean in, lean into it or twist into it and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, in this clip, it's like Al and Leon just like that. There's also that kind of Getty. There's that one clip of Frankie and maybe it's uh, Lucille Middleton or somebody like that, but it's like Frankie and he's really young and it's uh, it cuts from the Rainbow Room to the Savoy and you see that floating, uh, waiting jig walk. 
close position jig walk. And you also see in uh, like after seven, you see that kind of groovy waiting around close position six count where they kind of do it like this. And, uh, right. and so in right. this footage and with the footage of Thomas King, um, it's just interesting to point that out. Like if you watch the footage, you'll notice the open position waiting around six count before the tuck turn that comes before the step where, where uh, they have their hand on their shoulder. Um, that's really common. So that's, it's an that's interesting great, Nathan. Uh, I think the other thing that's really fantastic, you pointing that out, not only will hopefully suggest to people that it's okay to experiment and try <laughs> try the open position for longer, see what comes of it. Um, but I know so many people are, are working on their solo jazz or even tap and they want certain things. And this also just leaves so much space and possibility for, for more movement like that. Ah, uh, yes, yeah, good point. Well, I don't see the partnered and the solos that separate. So I think, you know, I guess what I'm saying is you could try that out for yourself. Like, uh, like you know, uh, Leon's doing it like, kick, kick, wait, kick, you know, that's his rock step, you know, that's good for you, it doesn't have to be for partner dancing, you know, so like if I'm doing my Charleston, you know, all, all this stuff, partner dancing, solo dancing, anyway, uh, good chat. It's and, all the same. Uh, well, Nathan, Nathan, pause for just one moment because um, yeah. I'd love to see if there were any last comments or questions that anybody wants to write in uh, for Nathan while we have him. Um, and while we're seeing if any comments come in, Nathan, um, tell us about your shoes. People were asking a lot about that. Uh, this uh, shoes are um, from from. Say say again. From what? From from. They are uh, Chloe Hong. Oh, gotcha. Yes, yes, yes. Shoes. Yes, yes, um, yes. I actually, the, you know, they're pretty well worn, but I don't wear, wear them a whole lot. Um, I, I love uh, Chloe's work and everything. Um, but I, I will also admit that the reason I'm wearing the shoes is just because they are the most visible shoes. And my, like, workaday practice shoes are olive colored and they blend in with my floor um so I, gotcha. I had to get a pair of shoes that was really visible and i think this qualifies they're they're beautiful they're really beautiful nathan before i let you go spencer and i'm sure maybe some other people they just asked if we could dance it slowly together maybe four more times all of us together slow um, so I'll let you count us off. Um, yeah. Johnny says he loves the idea of incorporating solo into partner. Um, uh, took a class at yeah, we were, Focus. Johnny, we were going the other direction. We were stealing partner steps for solo, but I like both, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So let's, uh, I'll let you count us off, Nathan, and let's like maybe do it slowly all together four times or maybe start slow and then get faster by the fourth go. Uh, yeah. Uh, so I'm going to do it where um, if you were following along and facing your computer, then you and I would be at the same angle. Uh, so I know I've been changing. How so I'm going to do it this direction, which is backwards of the way it appears in the spirit moves. Nathan, Nathan, and, uh, Nathan, Nathan. Nathan. Oh, one, sorry. I was going to say, do it do it two, so that everybody at home can stay one, with you and join you. One, two, three, go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Remember, we're not dancing. We're just acting out a description of it. This is a learning tool, but it's not a very realistic version of the step. It's just one way to learn. You could always just try full speed, which is probably closer to the way that step would have been passed on. Five, six, seven, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Five, six, seven, and one, Two, three, four, five, six, 
seven, eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm going to do it a couple times the other way because you might want to look at me when you're doing your scuff scoot. Uh, five, six, seven, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Five, six, here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then the reality of dancing it is so different that you probably need some like in between transitional time. Like you got to go back and forth between this academic sort of uh, grayed out uh, description of movement. To something that feels like dancing or like I'm imagining a song I like and I'm like yeah I want to go I want to go you know I'm getting like emotionally invested and trying to disassociate from the classroom trying to let my body move you know so shiny stocking that I wear when I'm with you hey you know where it's like hey and because the thing is when you learn it flat you kind of learn it as though you're not supposed to move your hips or something. Or you kind of learn it like your hands aren't part of it. And that's why the dancing gets, like, destroyed. And then we need classes called musicality or whatever. So just don't forget, like, there's always, like, ten times the amount of detail uh, in movement. And we're not talking about it. <clears throat> we're not breaking it down. But it's just the part of the doing it that we call dancing, the part where your body wants to invest emotionally and where you just want the feeling, the sensation of doing it. And so whenever you learn a step in this way, you kind of have to bridge that gap yourself later. Um, I understand the need to break it down, uh, but just make sure you understand that like <laughs> executing it in that form is not the end of the process of being a good dancer. It's just... It's just the very, very, very beginning of acquiring, like, the coordination required to execute a difficult step. But the end of the journey is then reintegrating with your dancer self, with the spiritual dancer self that wants to do, like, yeah, uh, uh, and reintegrating that with the complicated, executable step. That was beautiful. All right. Well, I think uh, I, that was a lot of information. That was so thorough, Nathan. Thank you. Um, David had asked, please do it again fast. But I feel like, David, we're past the hour. And uh, not only will this video... It doesn't matter because it's on the video. You can do it with, with the video. And, and I was also going to say that this video will be on the YouTube channel and on our Facebook page. So you can actually watch this video again and again and, and again if you just want to watch Nathan doing it fast. Um, but yeah, uh, one more time, everybody, if, if there's any love or donation that you would like to send over to Nathan as a thank you for his time uh, and sharing and teaching, um, go over to syncopatedcity.com forward slash live. It's at the bottom of the screen. And there's information on how you can directly send to Nathan, um, just as a little thank you. Um, and Nathan, thanks, thank Amita. Thanks, yeah. everyone. Yeah, and and thank you so much. This is um, this is really hard work, and I hope I think that everybody watching uh, understands how much time you must have spent watching the video, studying it, coming up with this, working on it, and and then to break it down and give it. Yeah. To share it is is a lot so um, well you know um i think all for a lot of us our main thing is that we just love the dance form for for some reason and uh yeah everyone in their own way but uh i can't help but look at this footage over and over again and i'm happy to share it if it if if people are connecting with it because i just want to feel like i belong to a set of people that that think it's really special dance style and movement. And uh, I mean, I've been going after that particular piece of dance footage for many years. And you might remember, we've already made an instructional video on that step. Yeah, for it was I years and ago, years ago, like point, over, I, you know, over At that point, I wasn't doing the step as accurately 
or with as much detail. So the the theory of a step that you've stolen is a kind of an evolving um, piece of dance and a lot of a lot of pieces of footage of difficult movement can teach you, you know, you can learn six steps from one step because every time you steal it you get it a little bit wrong and you kind of accumulate these different versions as a part of your own movement language. Yeah, I think that was most exciting when you were demonstrating how we can use elements of this step that you've broken down and just play with it as you like on your own to different tempos. Um, that's really exciting. And so hopefully a lot of people watching will will do that. Um, Ashok said, insightful. I will take away a lot more than just the step sequence. So that's great. Um, thank you so much, Nathan, for your time. I hope you and Gabby are doing well. And uh, I hope we can all come out and play together soon. Um, but this was great. Thank you very, very, very much. And uh, if anyone has comments, you know, uh, add them. And like I said, the videos will still be up for you to watch and review and rewind later. Thanks, Nathan View. Bye. <laughs> Bye.